So if you complain about JavaScript a lot due to maybe it's weird semantics, it's lack of a type system, and the case of browser JavaScript, it's somewhat outdated syntax, then perhaps TypeScript is for you. We're going to do two things in this video. The first is we're going to talk a little bit about TypeScript and how it fits and what its role is in the overall JavaScript ecosystem. And the second thing we're going to do is show you how to take an existing JavaScript project and convert it to a TypeScript project. So a lot of you may already know this, but there's two primary types of type systems. You have dynamic typing and you have static typing. Some examples of languages that have dynamic typing are things like JavaScript, Ruby, Python, and PHP. Essentially what happens in those languages is you assign a value to a variable and then that variable gets a type. So like in Python or JavaScript, you can just do age equals 34 and then the age variable will be an integer. Now farther down in the program's execution, you could set age to say false, and now suddenly age would be a boolean, even though it was previously an integer. On the static typing side, you have languages like C, C++, and Java. With those languages, you have to specify up front what a variable's type is going to be. So if you do age equals 30, you would actually have to do int age equals 30 to say this will be an integer. And because you told it that it's an integer up front, if you ever try to change it to something other than an integer, it will not work. Also with static type languages, if you're creating functions and methods, you have to actually specify what the return type of the function and method will be up front. With a dynamic type language, you can return anything or nothing and it doesn't really matter. So thus we have TypeScript's real offering here. It's to make JavaScript be a little bit less like JavaScript and a little bit more like C and Java. It really shouldn't be a question in anybody's mind that statically typed languages are going to be safer than dynamically typed languages because errors with statically typed languages are caught at compile time, whereas with dynamically typed languages, errors are caught at runtime. The problem with errors being caught at runtime is it's often not you catching the error, it's your user catching the error. Often a complaint about static typing is that it takes longer to do. So TypeScript tries to just please everybody and it says, you know what, we're going to make TypeScript as a super sev JavaScript and we're going to make everything optional. You can either fully use TypeScript or you can not use any of it. It doesn't really matter to TypeScript. In fact, all valid JavaScript is also valid TypeScript. This means that you can literally just rename your file from .js to .ts and suddenly you have a TypeScript file. From there, you can start picking and choosing the features you want to use to make your program better. So now let's go ahead and convert an existing JavaScript project into a TypeScript project. Keep in mind this video is not designed to be a TypeScript tutorial. I'm just trying to help you convert a project to TypeScript, and then I'll just modify one of the files with some TypeScript code just to show you. Of course, to use TypeScript, the first thing you got to do is install TypeScript. So break out your trusty terminal, do npm i-g TypeScript, and hit enter, and that will install TypeScript. And we're done. This gives us access to a command called TSC, the TypeScript compiler. We're going to use that to actually convert TypeScript into JavaScript. I've created a really simple two-file project here. I have main.js, which requires a module called calculator, and then it uses a method called sum that's part of that module to add two numbers together. In calculator.js, I'm exporting a single function called sum, which just returns the sum of two numbers. That's it. Very simple. If we go ahead and run this, unsurprisingly, all it does is output sum 9. Next we're going to do is restructure our project a little bit, and because I can't actually make the tree larger in Atom, I'm going to do everything from the terminal here. So currently in this folder I have the two files I said, main and calculator. We'll start by creating two new folders called dist and source. So we'll make their dist and source. The reason we need two folders is because there is a phase where the TypeScript has to be converted to JavaScript, and then ultimately you run the JavaScript. Like TypeScript is not designed to be ran directly. So dist will contain the built JavaScript, and source will contain the TypeScript source. So what we'll do now is we'll rename main.js to main.ts, and we'll rename calculator.js to calculator.ts. And then we'll move main.ts and calculator.ts into the source folder. So now what we have is two folders. One is dist and source, and then inside dist is nothing, and inside source is those two files, calculator and main.ts. So there's two ways to get your TypeScript code compiled to JavaScript. You can either use the TSC command line utility with a bunch of command line options, or you can use what's called a tsconfig.json file. I prefer the latter. So in the root directory, we're going to create a tsconfig.json file. In this file, we're going to load it out with several things, the first of which is compiler options. The first option is going to be module, which tells the compiler which sort of modeling system to use. If you're targeting Node.js applications, then you're going to want to use common.js. If you're targeting the browser, you'll want to use AMD. 
The second option is going to be the language target. And this is going to be what type of JavaScript TypeScript should emit. So again, if you're targeting Node.js, you can probably use ES6. That'll be fine. If you're targeting the browser, you'll have to use ES5 because that's the version the browser supports. And the last option is going to be outdir, which we're going to set as dist. This just says that for every TypeScript file it finds, compile it and output it to the dist folder. The next thing we're doing is telling it what should be included in the compilation. So in this case, we want source slash star star slash star. That'll compile everything in the source folder and then everything in every folder in the source folder. The one cool thing about the TypeScript compiler is if you have folders in the source folder, it'll automatically make those in the disk folder as well. So it'll retain the proper tree structure. And then if you have something that you need to exclude, you can do so here in the same exact way. I typically exclude node modules. When you're ready to compile your file, simply come over to the terminal, type TSC, and hit enter. It should finish, and if you don't see any errors, then it means everything was fine. Now normally, every time you modify a file, you'd have to come back here and type TSC over and over again. And of course, that's really lame. So what you can do is, you can do TSC-W, and this will actually watch the current files as you're working. So you can see that this is last updated 154630. If I come over to my TypeScript file, and I just hit save, you can see now it updated to 154640. Now what we'll do is we'll just trigger an error just so you can see. So in this case, I'm just going to take off this trailing parentheses and I'll come back here and now it shows you that there's a problem. So once you're done working, you can edit this and now you can go into your disk folder and you can see that you now have JavaScript files again. And just like you used to run them, you can do node main.js and it works just as well, sum nine. So that's what we're going to do is just implement a little TypeScript and just make the compiler complain about a couple things. So in our calculator.ts file, we can make this a little more strict. We can say that num1 needs to be a number by doing colon number. And then we can say num2 needs to be a number by doing colon number again. Now, so far, so good. I have tsc-w running and everything's fine. But watch what happens when I explicitly define what this function should return. So if I do colon string, all of a sudden now there's a problem. The compiler is complaining that type number is not assignable to type string. That's because TypeScript has already checked this out. It said, all right, well, if I do a number plus a number, that gives me another number, which means I would be returning a number. And because this says that it should return a string, this is obviously a problem. To fix this, of course, I would simply change string to number to say that, of course, sum should return a number, and now the compiler is happy again. What's even cooler is it'll check it in main.ts. If I already use this function in a place that expects a string, it would say, hey, I can't do that because this is clearly returning a number. So it's not just type checking the function itself, it's also type checking the implementation of that function in some other file. And we're done. Hopefully this was a good primer on how to get going with TypeScript. It's really not that hard to convert an existing project into a TypeScript project and start using it immediately. And keep in mind that all valid JavaScript is also valid TypeScript, so you can just do the conversion and then just start adding types as you deem fit and as it makes sense for your program. As always, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.